Model steam engines, top tip time, part 70. This is all about brake blocks. Once upon a time, I heavily modified one of these. It's a Chinese made 14XX locomotive. This is a great western engine like the one I'm working on, which is a castle class. And in this close up, the only one in the entire series, you can actually see the brake hangers. The arrangement appears to be quite different to normal brake hangers on other locomotives so I need to duplicate this. The first thing I did was to buy a ring of brake blocks, but these are going to take too long to machine. Because the shape and thickness of them is just not right for this engine. That is assuming that the brake blocks on the 14XX were correct, but they looked okay. The brakes on the 14XX were dummies, and it's going to be the same on this locomotive. The more I look at this, the more I realise that to make this look okay, it's going to take a long time it's going to be far easier to fabricate the brake blocks and fit them to the existing scale hangers that I already have for the locomotive. And with a final look at the braking arrangement on the 14XX, let battle commence. I'm going to go with plan B. I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and bought a piece of brass bar. And this brass bar is a quarter of an inch thick by half an inch wide. Then I asked Matt at Blackgate's if he would be so kind and roll the piece of bar using their proper set of bending rollers because the set of bending rollers that I have are very small and this is how it turned out, it's really good what I'm doing here is cutting off the ends because when you use bending rollers the very end parts of the bar or whatever you're rolling isn't as accurate as the rest all I'm doing is trimming about an inch off each end and that way what's left is accurate to the diameter of the wheel the next step is to mark and cut out the brake blocks from this ring I have a 5 inch gauge model of a 14XX Great Western locomotive and I featured this model in a video a while back as I rebuilt it. All I had to do was measure the brake blocks on that, then measure and mark some lines on the brass ring, followed by cutting out the individual brake blocks on the bandsaw. And in this clip I'm profiling the edges to the correct shape using my 1 inch belt sander, which is a very useful tool. After just taking the sharp edge off the other side, they all look like this. They're going to fit into these scale brake hangers and they're going to be dummies, they are not working brakes. Fitting fully functioning working brakes to a locomotive in this scale is a complete waste of time. If you apply the brakes when you're running the engine, then the wheels are going to lock and flats will develop on the wheels. The only practical application for working brakes on a locomotive of this size is to stop it from rolling away on the steaming bay if you have a leaky regulator. This locomotive has a tender with working brakes and that's sufficient to stop it rolling away. This is the first time I've used this machine. It's a Proxon milling machine and it really is good. I'm amazed at this. Whenever I use milling cutters of this size in my large milling machine, I always break them. But not in this Proxon milling machine. I'm milling a slot of the same length in every brake block. And look, after I've finished, the cutting tool is still intact. And that's a first for me with this size of milling cutter. And after my miniature milling frenzy, all the blocks have got a nice slot which is exactly the same depth in exactly the same position. What I need to do now is make the part of the brake block that fits into the hanger. The slot in the brake hangers is really not very deep. I will have to shape the end of this piece of brass to fit into the brake hanger. And also I will need to drill a hole in it and that way the brake block will be secured to the hanger by using a single bolt. In this clip I'm using my Proxon drilling machine and this allows me to drill the holes in the brake block extensions very easily. I actually shaped the end of the piece of brass before I used the hanger as a jig except for this last one which I shaped after I drilled the hole. So here you see the principle I now have a full set of brake blocks with mountings to allow them to be fastened into the hangers. And the next step is to silver solder all the components together. This clip shows me applying the flux to the components before I permanently silver solder them together. I'm in the outer part of the workshop and all of the brake blocks are sat on a piece of stainless steel fire grate. This is the same stuff that I use in my miniature locomotives. This particular piece is an offcut that I bought from Blackgate's Engineering. And it's not as good as a brazing hearth, but it's very convenient just to sit this fire grate on top of the vise for silver soldering small components. 
Needless to say, I thoroughly cleaned the components before assembling them, and now using the blowtorch, I'm heating them to red heat and applying the silver solder. As I heat up the parts using the blowtorch, you will notice that I apply the silver solder when the flux takes on a watery appearance and it runs around the joint. The next thing to do is to let the parts cool to black and quench them in water. What I need to do next is get them ready to go into the acid bath, and for this, I'm using a piece of silver solder through the holes in the brackets. I've made a loop at each end of the silver solder to allow these parts to be suspended in the acid, and once I've tied on my piece of thin silicone rubber tubing, it's over to the acid bath. And after about 24 hours, they should be clean. What I propose to do is fit the brake shoes to the brake hangers and then fit them to the brackets on the engine. Before I start, I have to mention that the brakes on this engine are going to be non-functional because any braking system on the six driving wheels of the locomotive would be ineffective. The only practical use for a braking system on the locomotive is to make sure it doesn't roll off the steaming bay. The tender for this engine already has a fully working braking system which is sufficient to stop the engine from rolling off the steaming bay if it was set in forward gear and had a leaky regulator. The braking system that I'm going to fit to the locomotive chassis is not going to be functional, but it will look like the way it should do. I've studied quite a lot of photographs of Great Western Railway brakes, and the design is quite different to the braking systems of other railway companies at the time. I'm going to thread all of the brake hangers using a 7BA tap, and I'm also threading the bracket that is silver soldered to the brake shoe, and once the bolt is all the way through the assembly, I'm putting a lock nut on the back. Well, I would be if I could find a spanner the right size. And that's one of the reasons I use this, a Barco adjustable spanner. This very high quality spanner that I've had for now 35 years or more, never rounds the edges of nuts and bolts because it is a precision item. With the lock nut in place, the brake hanger and the brake block is now ready to fit to the chassis. This is a 5BA bolt with a brass washer, and this is how I'm going to hold the hanger to the main bracket. If these were going to be working brakes, I would not do it this way. I would make a pin with one end threaded to screw into the square part of the bracket. But as I've already mentioned, these brakes are going to be non-working, so it will be perfectly fine doing it this way, just using a normal bolt. Here I am using the tap to thread the second brake hanger, pretty much in the same way that I threaded the first one, I'm very similar to the way I'm going to thread the other four, but I'm not going to show the threading of every one of the brake hangers. A word of warning when threading small pieces of metal with small taps. They can quite easily break, so take it easy, be gentle and occasionally back off to clear the swarf. And very important, do not drop the entire assembly, the tap wrench, the tap, and the part that you're tapping, on the floor during the tapping process, because usually the tap will break off in the work. I speak from experience. I spend a lot of time doing this, sorting through small pots of nuts and bolts, and in this instance I'm looking for brass washers, and there they are clearly in the right hand side of the picture. It's really quite difficult to get parts out of these small drawers. That sounds like a girlfriend joke, I think I'll rephrase it. It's quite difficult to get parts out of these small plastic drawers. And here's a tip to extract washers and other small parts from confined spaces. Just wet your finger. Saliva usually does the trick, and it's also quite good for picking washers up from flat surfaces. I'm fastening the hanger into the bracket using a 5BA bolt and one of the aforementioned brass washers. It's three down and three to go on the other side. But to save time in the video, as it's very much a repeat process, I'm only showing the fitting of these to one side, although in the next image you'll see them fitted to both sides. Some of these hangers were tight and some were slack, but that's just the way it is, and as the dummies anyway, it doesn't matter. What I'm doing in this clip is measuring the distance between the hangers at each side of the frames, because even though the braking system isn't actually going to physically work, it still needs to look the part. Here's a wider shot showing the general arrangement. One hanger per wheel, one brake block per wheel. All I need to do now is make the linkages. And that is it for this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website 
and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.